Charlotte, this is going to be your seventh WrestleMania. What does this WrestleMania mean and represent to you? I want to say it gets easier with experience, but it doesn't. I think pressure, um, expectation, um, all of it kind of adds up. Yeah. Having to rise to the occasion that many times and on the grandest stage, I've always either been a contender or a champion. And here I am going into my seventh with the performances and the rivalries I've already had. It just, it makes it, yes, <clears throat> with experience, I know what it's like to be out there, but my own personal pressure and my own goals and my own expectations of, for myself and my performance, I feel like the weight of the world is on my back right now. Um, and I love proving people wrong. So I love the pressure. Yeah. What are some of those expectations you have for yourself going into this seventh time around? Well, for instance, I have an A&E biography coming out next week and the, it's the legends series, mm -hmm. which I didn't know it was for the Legends series. So I'm like, here, I'm an active performer with the title legend. That means I'm at the top of my game. I'm there. I've made it where like, I still in my like own personal free time feel like I still have, you know, so much further to go. Like still want to grow. I still want to learn. I still want to get better. I still want to, you know, have that you know, the greatest performance of all time moment. Um, so I just feel like all those things add up or weigh on me on a professional level, but it's good things. It's not bad. It's, it's a good thing to have. I think it was like, what makes me tick Tom wired. Yeah. So who is Charlotte Flair now? How has your character evolved? The people's queen. <laughs> For so long, I told everyone else to bow down, whereas now I'm just embracing the journey. I wouldn't say that Charlotte's good. I wouldn't say she's bad. I think she just knows that, you know. She's given her all for so many years, and this is what she loves, and she just wants, you know, the audience to know that, whether she's acting up or you know, being, whether she's being bad or whether she's like being good, it's just, she's here to be the greatest of all time. And she's going to give you that consistency, that passion, that love for the business every time she goes out there. And I think that's very, um, likable. I love that being a superstar is in your blood. Um, <laughs> you talk about, you know, this love for the business. Can you kind of talk about what WrestleMania and the WWE means to you? I know it's your, your family legacy. It's your, your family business, but most importantly, it's, it was your brother's dream. So can you kind of dive into that and explain how that fuels you every day? Um, so did specifically what WrestleMania means to me? Um, so obviously to the world, it's a pop culture extravaganza. It's our Super Bowl, biggest show of the year, biggest rivalries, biggest, you know, biggest stars. But for me, like when my brother died in 2013, it was the day before WrestleMania and he was coming home for the first time to see me wrestle. I wasn't on WrestleMania. I was still in developmental, but I was at Access where we put on exhibition matches. So like, every WrestleMania week, all those emotions are hitting me where I'm like, I'm walking into WrestleMania and I'm here because of him. Like, yes. And like a hundred percent, it was for him in the beginning. And now like, I will always carry him with me, but now it's still like, how did I get this far? How do I get this opportunity? And I guess I feel closest to him around this time because like WrestleMania is such a big deal to the superstars like everyone dreams of a wrestlemania and i'm living his dream so every t you know when i'm out there at wrestlemania i'm like we did it yeah thank you for sharing that and my condolences to you and your family on your loss oh thank you
where does your confidence come from? I saw earlier on in your career, you <laughs> talked about watching kind of Nikki Bella and seeing the way that she talked and walked and looking at her and being like, wow, like that's She's a champion. Smart. And yeah. then had moments where you kind of second guessed yourself and were like, hey, where do I look when I'm walking, even though you had that athleticism, but now it's complete opposite. So what changed for you and how did you get from that to who you are now? <clears throat> fake it till you make it. Right. Right. <laughs> like I'm not, there's not moments now that I'm faking it. Like now, like I know how good I am and I'm proud of it because I know what it's taken to get there. I know the dedication that no one sees. I know the hours that I've spent that no one knows about. Like, I think that's what I hold so dear to me. That's why I have all that confidence is knowing like I put in the groundwork. I also know that there will never be another talent like me because of how much, how consistent I have been these last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know how I got here. But like, I'm proud of that. Like, I'm super, like, I went through this like weird phase where I felt like I had to apologize for like having opportunities. And now I'm like, wait, it took me like three years after that to be like, why am I apologizing for having opportunities? Like, why do we as women feel like we have to say sorry? Yeah. Like, we don't need to say sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, good. Like, don't don't dim your light to make other people feel comfortable. Why did you feel that way? Why did you feel like you had to say sorry for those opportunities that came your way? I think that I took the criticism to heart and like being an athlete, you know, when you're MVP or team captain or the camaraderie that comes along with sports, that's what I was raised in. Like I, uh, gymnastics, basketball, played volleyball in college, diving, softball, um, track, all those sports. Like I, there's, there's no, no one's telling you that you're only good at something because of your last name or not telling you that, or even giving that perception. So like, I can't lose my last name. Like I am who I am, but I felt like so many people felt that doors opened for me because of my lineage. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, I always felt like I had this chip that I had to apologize for being Rick's daughter. And I really felt that like these, I just want these people to like, or like not people like, why? And I think it was not, not necessarily that it was true, but it was like the own, the, my, the own, my own pressure that I was putting on myself. Like when you hear a opponent, like even today, when you hear your opponent say, well, why is she in the title picture so many times? Yeah. Like it's a choice. Why aren't you asking yourself, why aren't you in the title picture that many times? Mm. Ask yourself that. Yeah. Like, but it ta I think it takes age and I think it takes experience and personal growth and I don't know, like it's taken a long time to feel that way. <laughs> yeah. Basically my, my whole career. Yeah. Earlier on, you talked about how, you know, how much time and effort you put in. You are the queen of WWE, a 14 <laughs> women's SmackDown champion. And you've been one of the pioneers in making women's wrestling what it is today. What kind of work do you have to put in behind the scenes to get to that level individually and then also what kind of work do you have to put in to elevate this sport for women as a whole so here's an example when you are the face of the division you're not just wrestling you're doing media you're doing signings you're doing all of the above extras plus being the champ and making extra shows that also means working on every single live event so because i've been that so many years i've done that so many years. Plus when we go overseas, I'm, you know, I don't stay out all night. 
I'm eating my grilled chicken and vegetables. It's making those sacrifices at the right time. Now, do I have fun? Yes, but I made the sacrifices early on to get to where I am today. And I can't, you know, thank myself enough for being so disciplined early on because I don't think I'd be here if it wasn't for being so hungry and knowing what it takes. Yeah. So what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? I guess like two, two certain things like, you know, male or female doesn't matter. She was one of the greatest of all times. I want to be in the conversation, gender, gender aside, but I think, and for men too, but for women to know in any industry that you can make it to the top and stay at the top and be at the top in any, any, in any boys club. That's so important. I love that. So switching gears, how exactly do you prepare for WrestleMania? You talk about oh. chicken and veggies. What is your diet like? Oh, miserable right now. <laughs> no, actually for like this past week, it's been super high carb. So mm-hmm. I can lean out next week. So it's been easy. Um, so like this week, uh, breakfast is chicken, asparagus, two tortillas, chicken for breakfast, chicken for breakfast. I get that protein and I love it. Girl, (laughs) my favorite meal though, for breakfast is oatmeal mixed with chocolate protein, Mm -hmm. um, or an omelet. Mm -hmm. But then the next one is salmon and a potato. The next one after that is steak and rice and then chicken, lettuce, cucumber for the last with a protein shake mixed in there. Wow. Very clean, but very delicious. Real exciting. (laughs) (laughs) And by all means, like what I've learned over the years, it's moderation. So I try to follow it. It's not necessarily perfect all the time. Like I might get it right two days and then, or like I'll add in a protein bar or salad or smoothie. Like it's just having some kind of layout or format that works. Yeah. Next week though, I'll probably be more like to the T. Yeah. And then how do you prepare physically for WrestleMania? An hour in the gym. That's it. If I can't get it done in an hour and 15 minutes, go home. Like listen to your body. Um, I isolate muscle groups, maybe one day's glutes next day is shoulders and triceps back and biceps like I just alternate every day yeah as far as the stunts and the flips and all that stuff when do you practice those oh no that just comes with the territory now which is (laughs) what you get (laughs) wow yeah so on the actual day of Wrestlemania what does your schedule look like walk me through the full day um I don't know yet but sometimes I could have an interview with Fox or ESPN in the morning and then call time. So if we're in LA, it's probably 10 30 or 11. Well, we are in LA, but due to West coast time mm-hmm. and then makeup walkthroughs, camera angles, entrance, entrance practice, just to get the timing. Cause the ramps are usually longer mm-hmm. and then getting glammed up. Cause it's usually like, the most glamorous, like the, the biggest robes, the biggest, the brightest gear you have all year. So making sure all those are tweaked. And then if there's any, you know, signings in between or say, well, I think last year I had a, like a DraftKings appearance during that day. So the WWE has such a loyal fan base. What has your experience been like with the fans and what is their support meant to you? So my personal fans are as loyal as they come. They've been with me through it all. Um, But what's so great about the WWE universe is they're going to either let you know if they like you or they don't like you. (laughs) They're not going to be quiet. What is it like being on the road 24 seven? I don't know anything else now. (laughs) So when I'm home for more than two days, I'm like, okay, what's next? But I love being home. Um, But it's just finding a schedule that works for you. Um, getting a routine, knowing how it goes, hotels, rent a cars, meals, all of it. Like I'm so used to it now. It's not like a thing. Yeah. So looking ahead to your matchup, what do you think of 
that disrespect from Rhea Ripley telling you a 14 time champion that you're going to learn to call her champion and you're going to learn to fear her and then taking a cheap shot at you. What was going through your head when she took that cheap shot? Exactly. Talk is cheap. Hmm. (laughs) I mean, uh, talk is cheap and my legacy is cemented. What I've done is done. What I mean to this industry, she has a long way to go to be, be thinking that I will have respect, but the last thing I will do will be calling her champion. Oof, fighting words. You guys went back and forth a few nights ago, but any other words to her ahead of the match? Um... Good luck. And you better bring your all. Who else are you interested in facing in your career? Is there anyone that is kind of your- Liv, uh, Well, first Bianca Belair mm-hmm. and then Liv Morgan, my next okay. two. Why is that? Well, I've never had a rivalry with Bianca. And we always said um, with the athleticism and very similar backgrounds, we can make magic. And then I've seen Liv from her start till now and seeing how much she's grown. I just would love that opportunity with her. Yeah. Are there any specific types of matches that you haven't done yet that you're just dying to do? Uh, mixed tag. Okay. A mixed tag. Who would be your partner? Uh-huh. Aw. I love that. Speaking of your husband, you recently got married this summer. Congratulations. What has married life been like for you? And and how does having that relationship add to your life personally and professionally? When you're doing well in your personal life, it makes everything better. So just, you know, having that one person, your person at -hmm. home after a good day or bad day just makes it easier. Oh, So WrestleMania is obviously the Super Bowl for you guys of your sport, but the next day, the next week, it picks up again with, with another event. What's next after this for you? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. (laughs) Sky's the limit, right? I ain't slowing down. I've got to get to 16. I've got to beat my dad's record. Yes. Love to hear it. Name it and claim it. Is there anything else you want the world to know about Charlotte Flair that they don't already know? I guess that I embody pro wrestling with class, with dedication, blood, sweat, and tears. Like I hope when people think of pro wrestling, they think of Charlotte Flair.